Good day, Mad. In our next segment, we are going to look at Pastor Randy Skeet. And in a question and answer session, he was asked whether or not the Trinity doctrine of the Adventist church is similar to that of the Catholic church, or is, if it's the same. And he tries to make a case for uh, the doctrine saying that it doesn't really mean that because another group is doing it, that it's necessarily wrong. And we will listen to what he says in the clip. But he then continues to say also that as the Catholics do, Adventists believe that God, or sorry, that Jesus is fully God. But does this really mean that Jesus is the almighty God? Is his understanding of the scriptures correct? So Imad, my question to you is one, are there similarities or is it the same? And is that not uh, problematic for the Christian? The fact that the God worshipped um, by the Roman Catholic Church is the same as the God worshipped by all other Christians. And then secondly, is the fact that Jesus is fully God, does that mean that he is the eternal or the almighty God, the sovereign of the universe? Please, Imad, go ahead. Thank you, Virgil, Virgil, for that. We'll play the video and, and then I'll comment on it. Some argue that the Trinity is a Catholic teaching mm -hmm. and that the founders of the Seventh Adventist Church did not believe in the Trinity. Let me listen to me carefully. When we hear the word heathen and pagan and Catholic, we start to panic. Are you with me? Now, do pagans eat breakfast? Yes. Do we eat breakfast? Yes. Is that pagan behavior? Are you following me? Is that, do, do pagans wear clothes? Yeah. Do we wear clothes? Is that pagan behavior? No. Now, the Catholics believe in the Trinity. It doesn't make it wrong because they believe in the Trinity. They believe that Christ is fully God. That's not a Catholic doctrine. That's a biblical doctrine. Not everything Catholics believe is wrong. But where they're wrong, they are catastrophically wrong. Are you following me? <laughs> now you're not listening to me. So they believe some things that are biblical and if you believe the bible you believe the same thing the doctrine of the trinity is biblical not catholic all right so as as you can see pastor skeet is saying that just because the catholics believe it it doesn't mean it is wrong the catholics believe some doctor uh, some biblical things uh, uh, and 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 he states emphatically that the the, the the trinity which the catholics believe in is a biblical doctrine hence he believes in it and 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 so forth so um i i i, I have to say that i i respect pastor randy skeet for for his honesty and 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 uh, bravery in in coming out and saying yes the doctrine of the trinity that we believe in that he believes in rather is the same as the catholic church and just because uh, uh is the same as the trinity of the catholic church and just because the catholics believe it it doesn't mean it is wrong right so he accepts the fact that his church, which happens to be the Seventh-day Adventist church, worships the same God that the Catholic church worships, namely the Trinity, right? And the point he's making, the defense that he has towards it, other than he says Trinity is biblical and he goes on to prove it, use some verses, we will deal with that. But, but the defense he has is that just because the Catholic church believes in the Trinity, it doesn't mean it is wrong right now i agree with pastor randy that every christian denomination including the catholic denomination would believe some biblical things right <clears throat> they, they they the catholics might or any other denomination might have their own twist on the biblical thing but i'm sure you will find uh, uh, something the catholics believe in that is biblical so i'm i'm not negating this point but what we are discussing in here is, is not just any biblical thing. We're talking about, we're discussing the identity of the God we worship. Now, Pastor Randy, as I said, happens to belong to the Seventh-day Adventist church. It is the church that these days and has been for the past 150 years, the church that is known for identifying the Catholic system, not the Catholic people, right? Don't make the mistake. Catholic system is not the Catholic people. The Adventist church, that Pastor Randy Skeet belongs to, 
is known, is famous for identifying the Catholic Church system as the Antichrist system, right? Uh, please don't confuse the, the two, the people with the system. There's a lot of Catholic people that are more faithful than I am, and they'll be in heaven before me and many others, right? So we're not talking about the people. We're talking about the system that overarching yes. the whole thing. Now, I'm also aware that Pastor Randy uh, understands the term antichrist to mean someone who replaces Christ. He says in one of his other videos talking about, you know, the, the antichrist and so forth, he says it doesn't necessarily mean someone who is against Christ. It simply means someone who replaces Christ. And, and he goes in the Catholic system to show how, you know, the Catholic priesthood replaces the priesthood of Christ and the confession of sins and so forth and all that, right? Um, so that's how he understands it. Now, regardless how you understand the term, the antichrist, what it means against Christ or replacing Christ, I want you to notice a couple of things about the Antichrist system that the Bible identifies, right? So I'm going to share a couple of verses with you and highlight a couple of things from them. Let me just pull it out in here. Uh, okay, let me share the screen so you can see it as I read it. Okay, in Daniel chapter 7 and verse 25, talking about the little horn, which is the Antichrist system, right? What I'm sharing with you, by the way, is nothing new. The, the church that Pastor Randy belongs to believes that he actually himself preaches that. Plus, what Pastor Randy and the Adventist church believes, and I happen to agree with him that the Catholic system is the Antichrist. Uh, this is nothing new. Uh, uh, almost all the reformers, Martin Luther and Calvin and all of them, believed it, right? So it's nothing new. But anyway, I want to highlight a couple of things for you. Notice what it says about the little horn, which is the Antichrist, which is the Catholic system. In Daniel chapter 7, verse 25, it says, And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Right? So this system, the Bible says that this system, the Antichrist, will speak great things against the Most High, meaning he will blaspheme, he will say bad things about God. Right? <clears throat> and he will persecute the saints. In Revelation... The, the Apostle John in the book of Revelation talking about the same system under the title of the first beast of Revelation uh, chapter 13. Notice what he says. Um, and I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast, after this system, the Catholic system. And they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast saying, who is like unto the beast and so forth, right? So, uh, the, the, the dragon or Satan is, is the one who gives the system its power. And all those who follow or wander after this system will end up worshiping the dragon, right? Or Satan. Notice what we go on to read in verse 5 and 6. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue 40 and 2 months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Now, the Bible says many other things about this Antichrist system, but these few verses are enough to make the point. The Bible says that Satan gives power to the Antichrist system. The system speaks blasphemy against God. Uh, 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 the system persecutes the saints of God. And all those who follow the system will end up worshiping the dragon or Satan. Now, I'm, I'm not sure if you're getting the picture. To receive power from Satan means you already give your allegiance to Satan. You, 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 you are Satan's puppet or tool. Satan will not give his power to the church of God. He will give it to his followers, to his system, right? Not only does the system give its allegiance to Satan, but it leads its followers to worship satan i didn't say that the bible says that all those who wander after the beast end up worshiping the dragon the dragon is satan the bible says now in a lot of this why would anyone with his right mind defend the idea that this system who gave its allegiance to satan actually worships the true god i mean it, it just it's not logical it doesn't make sense it's, it's, it's not scriptural it's it's crazy now, I, I just want you to ask you, I wanted to ask you a question. I want you to think about it. 
Do you think the Antichrist system, the system that sets itself as God, the Bible says, leading people astray, destroying their walk with God, leading them to worship Satan, do you think this system will teach people to worship the true God? I mean, just think about it. Do you think this system that is referred to as the man of sin, as, as the Antichrist, will worship Christ, will give glory, honor, and praise to Christ? Not only that, but will teach people, will teach all his followers to worship, adore, and give glory and honor to Christ, the true Christ? <clears throat> I mean, it's, uh, it's just not logical at all. Other pastors, anyway. Sorry, go ahead. To add in there, my, the, the verse that you also read said he blasphemes against the Most High. And so it, it really, with all the stuff you've just mentioned, and that too doesn't make sense that, that he would promote the, the worship of the true God. There's an, a, a, a satanic agenda, as it were. Exactly. Thank you, Virgil. So I, either Pastor Skeet is right, the Catholics God or the Catholic God is the true God, and as a Protestant worshiping the same God as the Antichrist system, that, that, that is not an issue. You shouldn't be concerned about anything. You should go ahead and, and worship the God of the Antichrist. You should promote the God of the Antichrist. And you should uh, 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 do what the, what the Antichrist system does, persecute those who don't worship your God, right? Either Pastor Randy Skeet is correct, or the Bible is right when it says that this system leads people to worship Satan, meaning they lead people to worship their God, right? <clears throat> now, I am not saying that everyone who believes in the Trinity is worshiping Satan. That is not the case. There, there, there are many godly people, uh, 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 almost all the reformers, Martin Luther and, and, and them were Trinitarians, right? God looks at the heart and motive behind what we do. <clears throat> So God meets us where we are according to the knowledge that we have and accepts our worship accordingly. So I'm not saying if you worship the Trinity or worshiping Satan. Absolutely not. We're simply looking at the theology and the doctrine. And what I'm saying to you is that the Trinity, which is the God of the Antichrist system, cannot be the same God uh, uh, that God's people worship. It just logically it doesn't make sense. Scripturally, it absolutely is very clear and and. They're not the same, right? We've dealt with it with many videos. We'll look at it uh, further in, in, in coming videos. But I, I'm just simply first appealing to your logic, right? Either Pastor Skeet is correct and there is nothing wrong. Go ahead and worship the same God as the Antichrist. Don't concern yourself. Or the Bible is correct. Have nothing to do with that system. If you follow that system, you're going to end up worshiping its God and that is Satan, right? All right. Now, with that said, I just wanted to make a, a comment on, on this. With that said, Pastor Randy, as you saw in the video, he, he, he said that, you know, in, in, in the context of talking about the Trinity and, and defending the Trinity and saying it's biblical, he says that uh, um, Catholics believe that Jesus is fully God. He says this is biblical. Now, of course, he stated that as defense uh, uh, and defending the trinity right defending what he believes so so in defense of the catholic trinity he said the catholics believe jesus is fully god it is not a catholic doctrine it is biblical now i agree with pastor skeet that jesus is fully god i mean you can't be half god and half not god you're either fully god or you're not right so when you say fully god what do you mean you mean he's god i agree jesus is god the bible refers to jesus as god and as Jehovah and as Elohim, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, we're not negating this fact. But this does not automatically prove the Trinity. You see, Trinitarians do these leaps of faith. I like to call them leap, uh, leaps of faith. They, they, they prove that Jesus is God, divine, thinking that this automatically proves that Jesus is the second member of the Godhead. He is God the Son, and, and it proves the Trinity, right? Or, or they go and, and prove that the, the Holy Spirit is a person, as Pastor Randy goes on, and we will deal with it. Uh, uh, the Holy Spirit is a person, not just a, a, a mere force, thinking that this automatically proves that the Spirit is the third member in the Godhead, the third person of the Trinity called God the Holy Spirit. 
<clears throat> now, both these things are true. Jesus is God and the Spirit is a person. But this does not automatically mean Trinity. You see, when the Bible refers to Jesus as God, what does it mean? Does it mean that, that Jesus is the one God of the Bible or that Jesus is the second member of the Godhead and, and, and so forth? Not at all. The Bible is very clear on who God is. Allow me to share the screen with you so you can see it for yourself. All right, here we go. <clears throat> now, the Bible is very clear on who the God of the Bible is. Jesus said the only true God is his father. I, I put it up on the screen to make it quicker because the references are there. He, Jesus said that the Jews at his day believed their God to be God the Father, not a Trinity, not Jesus, the Father of Jesus, right? He, Jesus, told the woman at the well to worship the Father. He taught his disciples to pray to the Father. He said that the Father is the Lord of heaven and earth, right? The apostles said, taught the same thing. Paul repeatedly said that God is the Father of Christ. The verses are there on the screen for you to see. Uh, uh, James, Peter, and John all taught the same thing, that God is the Father of Christ. <clears throat> all the verses are there on the screen uh, uh, for you to see. I'll just refer to one verse. Yeah, I have it here to make it quicker. Uh, 1 Corinthians 8, 6. But to us there is how many gods? But one God. Who is it? It is the Father. Why is he the one God? Of whom are all things, and we of him. He is the source of all things. And one Lord, one Master. Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. God created all things through his son, right? So the Bible is very clear who the one God of the, uh, of the scriptures is. It is God the Father, right? Uh, uh, further, in, in Corinthians chapter 15, verse 28, we read, And when all things shall be subdued unto him, unto Jesus, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. What this verse is saying, when God the Father will put everything under, under the feet of Jesus, this is uh, in the last days, then the Son himself will be subject to the Father. Why? That God might be all in all. Who is that God that might be God all in all? It is God the Father, right? So, yes, Jesus is God. But this does not mean the Trinity. Neither does it mean Jesus is the God of the Bible. Jesus is God because he is the son of God. His sonship is directly linked with his divinity. Let me put the verse up <clears throat> again. Notice this one. Uh, Therefore, <clears throat> the Jews sought the more to kill him because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. So Christ's sonship is what makes him equal with God. Christ's sonship is what makes him divine or God, right? So, so again, going back to uh, Pastor Randy's point or the two points that he made. Number one, is Jesus God, fully God? Yes, of course he is. This doesn't necessarily straight away equal the Trinity. He is God. Because he's the son of God. He's divine because he's the son of God, right? And uh, is there a problem with God's people in the last days worshiping the same God as the Antichrist? I mean, if honestly, if this doesn't raise red flags with you, I have no idea what will. He is referred to as the Antichrist for a reason. He's referred to as the man of sin for a reason. He's referred to as the beast that will burn in the lake of fire for a reason. He is referred to as the one who blasphemes against God and speaks great words against God and persecutes the saints of God for a reason. And that reason is not because he worships and gives glory and honor and, and, and whatever to the true God. Absolutely not. It is because he's a deceiver. He's a, he, he, he's a liar and he's the, the puppet of the, the father of all lies. Of Satan and he's leading people astray and leading them to worship a false god that in this day and age is called the Trinity. Anyway, I will leave it at that. 